So I've made it to Denmark to Mikkel's farm where he's running with Anders and Katrin. Mikkel was one of my favorite farm managers we've ever had at Ridgedale and Anders and Katrin are both highly skilled, super amazing work ethic people and I knew when I first seen them together in the winter they would do something amazing together this year and I can't think of a better team to be honest so let's have a look around their place. <music> We are currently six six families living together here and working together on different uh, enterprises. Newest enterprise here is this farm enterprise that I've started this year together with Anders and Katrine. Uh, 35 years ago when this place uh, yeah, started, it was based around an institution working with people with um, uh, that needed like what do you call it, care with their mental, um, like schizophrenia and stuff. Yeah. And uh, now there are a few other enterprises. There's a wine club here and like a rent out place with a commercial kitchen and stuff. So we are living together and working together here in this little community. And you are one of the main children of the place, I guess, that's got a big interest in, in sort of the Staying. future of the place. And the, yeah. yeah. So me and my sister, actually, we, we have both moved back here yeah. after we've been living in Coming. Ah, it's a beautiful place to be. And you've yeah. got about 30 hectares? No, 20. 20 hectares. Mm. And well, so 20, that's 25. Okay, and it wobbles itself around. It's called a wobbler. A yeah. wobbler. It's the XL wobbler. And the, so they've never sold any in Denmark before? No. Not so they the gave the you a free trial? Yeah. And that's running off your well? Yeah. Of two different... Sandbags for the row covers and things? Uh, this is more for the row covers. This is for the larger plastic. For tarps, for tarps that yeah. you're killing weeds with. Yeah. And do you like it? Is it efficient? I mean, it's good. Oh, you saw the clips on... Yeah. I like using uh, just clips on the hoops. Like a metal clip or something in the yes, ground? just like you can yeah. get these uh, heavy-duty plastic clips to hold on, uh, hold together wood when you glue it-ish. Yeah. And they would just climb on. But the wires work nice, no? They work very nice. Yeah, I like the sieve cellar. It's really, really good. And you've got built-in drainage in the floor, it's fine. Yeah, and it's all draining just out the wall. We put in these fans for drying greens and leaves and working yeah. really, really nice. And packing table over here. Very nice. And then walking cooler. This is the one you made? Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And cool. We... These are good now for me, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just found that I had a spare set. Yeah. Cool, so you had the walk-in chiller that you just put back together? And we, had the, we, had the, we had the walls and we bought the floor and the ceiling, just wood and insulation, and then we had, I mean, the, the room itself, we got it for 1,200 euros, yeah. including the, this big one, okay. 16,000 BTU and the cool one. But that's not including the hours, no, the money we spend on get, getting an electrician here to yeah. That was very expensive. So cool box overriding this and you're saying it gets down to five degrees in like ten minutes? Seven minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it's got the um, thermometer uh, here for the room. And then here is the heating element overriding the thermostat in the air conditioner. And it's really working very well. <laughs> you use these for the chilling in the room? Then? We use it for all storage market. and uh, market and for many of our libraries. I love it. Two different sizes, yeah, nice. but they all fit into each other. Yeah. Always a lid on. Are you happy with the bed size? With 25 meters? Works very great. Perfect. And it's the... It's the size of the tarp. Well, yeah. we've got tarps in, what was it, 50 meters long? Or was it 25 meters? 25. Yeah, you could either buy them in, in 25, no, in 50. It just made it really perfect with the size of the, of the tarps. Yeah. 
So they're 10 by 25. So one of our interns, Jasper, is setting up in Germany next year and he's going to really rock it, I can tell. But he, he was thinking to go more shorter beds like ours. But I was saying to him, you should check out I would 20 meters like, at least space, or 30. If you then go for longer beds. It's just, it's just efficient. Way more efficient. Yeah, way yeah. More. But you're seeding everything in here? And you're doing lots of micros too. A little bit. We've had good luck with us. What are you managing to sell them for? Uh, 200 Danish a kilo. Yeah, that's nice. And it's not too expensive, no? No. I think we sell ours 260. And there's people that sell, like, there's a guy, a friend of ours in Stockholm, selling 400 a kilo. Oh, wow. But to restaurants in Stockholm. So. Yeah. But it's very nice to run through the winter, like it's... This patch is, I don't know, it burned off or something. It's really looking bad. Yeah. Green on the, I see on there. There's also a lot of birds coming in, eating. Oh yeah? Yeah. But this patch was, I forgot to take it apart yeah, this is early enough, so it was completely grown together. Yeah. And how's the reality of, has it been for you all, like, like it's a lot to take on, no? In your season, are you all still good friends? Yeah. <laughs> it's been going impressively well. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's really good. Well. I mean, very good team. Unbelievably, unbelievably good. Yeah. Well. yeah. And it's fun when you sell all your produce. Yeah. Like people keep calling, and we try to look around and see if we can harvest more here, here, here. If we weren't selling, it would be <laughs> absolutely. Very I mean, our yeah. success is definitely helping on the, on the move. <laughs> What's the reality of your time? Like, are you? How's it going according to your plan? The veg garden's going really well. Yeah, I think it's going. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get time for rest and? Sundays off. Sunday yeah. Off. Yeah. And you? When do you start? Early mornings. Half six. No. Yeah. Six. Six. Sorry. Sometimes six. Sometimes five. Yeah. yeah. I start yeah. at five, moving the animals. Yeah. And I move them before. Breakfast and... So here's a theme of the moment uh, question for you guys because a lot of people that will watch this will be very inspired by what you've achieved in your first season. And something that we've been talking about a lot like with the interns and at our farm, we, as you know, it's like <coughs> planning but also like time and motion studies and efficiency planning. And there's quite a lot of people come through this year that are going off, thanks, that's red pepper. There's a lot of people going to start their own things, right? And, and I, I got the feeling not everyone got their heads around that, like why to push yourself to see how quick you can do each job. And like, what's your reflections on that kind of thing? Now, Anders has been working at Neversink, so he really knows about time and motion studies. And you've all heard my spiel on it from Ridgedale, so... Connor always said that the farm is not running on how many hours you deliver, but how much work you deliver in your hours. Yeah. So it's like, we can have short weeks, like every farmer was amazed that we only did 45 hours at Neversink and did so much work. But when it was, we met, we were in at 8 o'clock every morning, and I think throughout the season I was maybe 80 seconds late throughout the season. And two minutes past eight, I was harvesting radishes. So it's like, no yeah, singing it's songs, about. just work. Being super efficient yeah. at the time when you're there, and yeah. then just rest the rest. Yeah, rest and the then we had time to rest. It was pretty important, no? Yeah. yeah. And I think it, like you, I imagine you've had a lot of fun this season. Yeah. But the, it's a, it's a reality check for people now. They, they really need to know the importance of getting efficient finding the most efficient ways to do whatever it is you're doing. You can easily find yourself, like, I have days where I just find myself walking a lot back and forth and using time on, like, yeah, yeah, doing a lot of small things. But it's just the most efficient days, I think, is when we make a plan and we have it, like, from one to three prioritized. And then we just, like, we all know what to do and we yeah. just go from one job to another. And so I think, yeah, planning, and I'm also taking time yeah. in my uh, job so I can, like, compete with myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
This is very nice and very important. No? It's fun. Yeah. yeah. I find that the most fun at our farm is when people are stepping into that spirit for themselves. It's yeah. like, it, that's fun to me. It's, it's not work anymore. It's, it's fun. Yeah, how do you organize yourselves? Like, you made a lot of planning before you started the season, no? We spent basically three weeks mm -hmm. as, like, first thing. Making spreadsheets to, and yeah, like sorting the out the overall plan. we decided to work together. We sat down, we made our holistic, holistic context. And then second day and three weeks ahead, we were just sitting in front of the computer making spreadsheets and plans. This is your Copenhagen bike? Yes. Or Christiana bike? Yes. And you use that for carding around the... Uh, Flats and things? No, uh, we put on. Oh, yeah. Some more uh -huh, uh -huh. Like pepper? Yeah, I love pepper. <laughs> Thanks. So when we transplant, we put on this. Awesome. <laughs> it locks it in. Mm hmm. How many trays can you carry then? And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten. Super nice, so you can scoot out yeah. around to the gardens over the back. So nice. <laughs> Steady road. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Why In what turn? I've lost five so far. So, this is Mika's chicken caravan from Australia. So, very often have chicken. this is like a Royals Royce super automated chicken mobile. What's the things you love about it, Mika? It's got skid feeders. It's got skid feeders. So you can, how much feed do you get in them? 415 or uh, three of them. 415 kilos, which is kilos. enough for a week. It's about enough for 10 to 40, 10 days, 10 days. I think a huge benefit is the big open sides. Yeah. And the adjustment, the adjustability of the of the wings. So that and it, that gives you some weather shelter. It gives me weather shelter, and it gives me a big area for uh, for the birds to be very protected from yeah. aerial predators. Yeah. But also more shade um, as well. Lots of shade. But it's you're saying that the big opening allows the birds to get in and out really easy. Yeah, there's no competition like in the hierarchy of getting in and out of the opening. Yeah. So that opens just on a simple gas strut? Yeah. So there's a very, very little stress in this system. Yeah. It's yeah. nicely made, no? Again? It's very nicely put together. So these nest boxes are more like what you see in the commercial industry. They're automated. You can see videos of the chicken caravan online, but this is probably one of the first ones in Europe, no? I think so. And these are automated, so on a timer that's powered by solar up on the roof, these will open and close, which saves you having to be there first thing in the morning. And then similar sort of nest mats to what we use, and they roll down into this central conveyor belt, and you connect them in here. So you're typically, the, what time's the nest box is open? Five. Five, and you come down? And what time do you come and open up and... Yeah. So the feeders, you just leave them open all the time? And that's what, whether yeah. the birds are in or out? Uh, yeah. Okay. And I only have to go and fill them up every nine or ten days. Yeah, so you can drag all that along with the tractor. Yeah, so right now it's... A I mean, right now it's not connected. I could have it connected so the skid feeders were just pulled behind the caravan. Yeah. Uh, I haven't done that yet because I'm a little afraid of it being super, super long to get around in. But I mean, yeah. Most of my fields are pretty wide open, so it will work out. But One question I had for you, just because I saw it has single wheeled axles, that was been a major problem for us. We needed to make double wheels. Has yeah. that been a problem with sinking at all? Not at all, because I have those big tires on the tractor. So. Okay. So this is the business end of the. This morning, I, it was just for curiosity. I went out here. Well, I was out here anyway, at like half past eight, and I took the eggs that was there, mm -hmm. just so I get a feeling about 
in what time they're laying the most eggs. Yeah. Because right now the nesting boxes are closing at uh, four o'clock. Yeah. But I believe they're done collecting eggs way, way earlier. So this is about as high tech as you can get before you start Meeting being fully <laughs> automated. But this simple hand roller goes all the way along under the nest boxes and allows you to retrieve the eggs without disturbing the hens in any way and without doing a lot. And then you can immediately sort any dirty eggs out from the rest of them. Crack dirty and like large eggs. Yeah, you get some monster eggs I guess, no? What's going on here? Yeah, I have quite some big eggs every day and I sell them at a very good price at the market. People love them. They sell out in about two two hours at the market. And you've got this the whole nest box can it has a little spirit bubble there. Yeah, and it, it can, can be swim. leveled according to the topography. And then Mikkel also got these lovely egg carrying crates which they sell along with the chicken caravan so you've got these side holes that you can easily put in crates. You can order them directly in um, Italy where they're produced. Okay, very nice to know. They're not cheap but they definitely look after eggs if you're taking them in the back of a vehicle or yeah. on a bumpy bike. And how did you find it when you first got the birds laying and the shells are perhaps not so good? Did you have problems with the mat getting gummed up? And no. No? Um, I'm trying to shake the nesting mats once a week, but I'm not really doing it. I washed them once just to see if that would make the white eggs a bit cleaner. I mean, they're really clean, but... When they are when they're wet coming out of the cloak, is it called the yeah. cloak? I was thinking that the, maybe the dust on top of the mat would stick to the egg, and yeah. that was, would make it a bit dirty. But actually, I find that what's probably making it most dirty is because the hens can just get their beak in through the gap where the egg is rolling through. So especially the white hens that are much more. Um, they're thinner, but, nest, but they also um, they have a much stronger instinct for sitting on nests. Yeah. So they're trying to get in there and pull eggs back that they can sit on. So it's the dirt and the cow manure from the well, maybe not cow manure, but the dirt from the beak that are making these uh, black stripes on the white eggs huh. because they are just trying to make white eggs. So it might be a little hack to to make put a little bar in. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if the eggs still can roll in. And this, uh, so this unit is sort of running off the roof and you set the time for closing. And what's nice about, this is a pretty standard commercial um, nest, is that these doors will open and close really slowly. Mikael's farm is, uh, it's all organic certified. The property has been for a long time. So he's had to add these nest boxes on to meet organic certifications. Uh, you need a certain amount of nest boxes per hen. It's a bit of a silly thing, you know, in the sense of these nest boxes are super good for the birds and it, you know, it's a thing you have to do to meet regulations sometimes. There's regulations about everything. But this is chilled out. I like having a bike. It's nice to have a noise. Some of the cows down here? Yeah, I saw you had a bull in there. It's a very lovely spot. It's a very windy spot. There's some shelter for the field here, but the gardens have been getting windy now. Yeah. Organic. So, nice broad fork. This is a full 75 centimeter one. Where's the, where did you get it from? In France. Are you happy with it? Yes. It's not the deepest tined one, but it's no. nice for your heavy soils now. So you've got heavy clay here. Yeah, silver clay. But 700 liters, that's, that's a similar rate to we've been putting on, I guess. Uh, 
because your beds are yeah. 25. I reckon it is. A little bit less, but good amount. Oh, like what you've done with the place. 50, 55 riders. 55, and you're thinking to maybe drop that down? Yeah, to 20, 25 riders maybe. Yeah. What do you think of, like, are you going to scale up the gardens? Or are you going to... I'm thinking to... This, just in a... I mean, now I would like to do it, actually. Like to prepare that last uh, bit of sections up there. There's, like, one strip more to do. So you've got all of this compost over here. They've yeah. been using the backhoe just to yeah. lay it out with wheelbarrows. And... But I'm I'm probably borrowing a rototiller for the, for the track, like a small one. Yeah. Friend, and that would do a very shallow uh, rotor tilling and a seed like a very dense cover, like a diverse cover crop yeah. that will die off in the winter. And then, like late autumn, I will just flay what do you call it? Flay mow it? Flame weed? No, f mow it. Oh, flail. Flail yeah. mow it and put tops on and have that as the last bit of the garden coming yeah. into production last, next year. Okay. Largely in grass for the cows. Right now it's this year and next year is 10 hectares and in two years I will I will lease the other 10 hectares. Yeah. yeah. And right now having like so I came here in February and this was all just grass and you had the cows and you were just importing the Eggmobile weren't you? Yeah. yeah it and was on so its way. it's a lot for these guys to set up in this and how long have you been on the ground? Like five months? Five months, yeah. So pretty amazing what these guys have achieved together. We've been putting down 90 beds with, 300, no, with 700 litres of compost on each, mm. building a 29 metre long... You didn't have a backhoe at that point, did you? No. <laughs> the backhoe came much later. For this part. Yeah. Putting up the big polytunnel, building washing station, chiller, Assembling a chicken caravan, getting hens, starting holistic ma uh, grazing with cows. Yeah. Um, getting ready for market. Getting ready for yeah, market. Yeah, setting up a whole market. Setting and up the market. Branding and business. And setting up an egg packery that have been lots of regulations still going on. Yeah. Uh, we have been taking over the organic certification, so we have had uh, control of, uh, and and just general stuff that you always have when you're starting a new business. I mean, that's a lot of administration and things you need to do. And right now, this far into the first season here, what's your vision for five years? Where will you be then? Well, I will have a, a micro dairy on the farm doing this new cool stuff I'm super excited about called cold pasteurization. So it's a completely new technology that is, yeah, really, revi revi what do you call it? Revolutionary <laughs> pasteurization of milk. So I'm super uh, keen on milking my cows. Uh, I, I mean, we had a, I had a crazy moment <laughs> in the beginning of this year when I, I thought I would start milking this year. Hmm. I'm pretty happy I didn't. Yeah, it's a lot to manage now. Yeah, but do you feel like you've been able to keep a handle on everything? Yeah, I mean, I think, but I think this is, that have been maximum, really. I mean, but I think we have been doing really, really good, and I've yeah. been doing really good, so. It's beautiful. But I'm happy I'm not, I didn't start milking this year. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I wouldn't be standing here. But longer term, will you have more people here? Absolutely. Like, on complementary kind of enterprises, that sort of thing? Yeah. Uh, so, I imagine the market, the, like the gardens here being three sections, so a uh, third one up there. Um, probably um, some more tunnel uh, for nursery and winter production. And dairy, maybe and then, one or two more eggmobiles. And then that's, so going back to your, the institution base here, so uh, uh, some of your market is growing for the institution who have always prioritized buying good organic food yeah so but you're able to meet to be that honest, supply to be honest it's i mean it's a very good customer because it's taking what we have yeah there's not a there's not a big uh, what do you call it demand or no. yeah 
but it's not one of our biggest customers at all. No. I mean, it's, so it's, where are you selling? Who's, what's the main marketplace? You've got a nice little market stand. We have a we sell cheap at the market. We have a <laughs> yeah, we have a. I mean, now after just two and a half months, we have a really really nice market yeah. at the town in the Roskilde at the square in Roskilde. Um, and I mean, that little stall we had there have just been doubling. I yeah. mean, in the beginning we came with a three by three tent. Now we have three by six, we have five tables, bringing a little less than half a ton of produce every week and selling it. And we have 170 customers through the, through the market each week. And what's uh, been your approach for advertising, just working with Facebook and your website? Anders have been doing a really amazing job on working on the local uh, newspapers. And so I think we have had two or three like mentioning mentions or articles in the local newspapers located in the area of, of Roskilde, which is like half an hour away from here. And uh, and then that, so that's one set of uh, selling or customers. And then the other part is schools, commercial kitchens, canteens, restaurants, stuff like that. And that was just, yeah, in the beginning of the year. I mean, again, Anders, he picked up the phone and he just called them. Anders is an awesome engineer. <laughs> what did you make? It's our roller. Same roller? Yeah. Very nice. We only have the four row pinpoint seater, so we need to roll it. Yeah. I like the um, Swiss one. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing everything with that cedar, yeah. a board fork, a roller, you've got a nice rake. And cleaning a hole. Yeah, nice. And the copra. So you had your last calf to there? Yeah. yeah. It just popped out easy as it should. So it was standing down here trying to drink from the bull when I came back from lunch. <laughs> <laughs> it looked really funny. <laughs> and the bull isn't yours now? No, I borrowed him from a farm not far away. He's the breed from North um, North Italy. He's a, the breed called Piemontese. And uh, so he's a part of our, our breeding program. So right now I have actually the three of the four breeds I want to mix together is represented on this field now. It's really cool. And what's the breed you're mixing? So it's the breed that was already here, which is a mix of everything. Then it's the Danish Red Dairy Cow, uh, the Piemontese, and an African uh, cow called Tuli. So the aim is to breed double muscle genes to Danish milk. Dairy cows. You want Danish tasting milk? That's a lot better for beef at the end of it. Yeah. We're just going to move the egg mobile. And it's five o'clock in the morning. There's a hare that's been chased by a fox into the electric fence. And Foxy's managed to get the front end off before he's probably got a shock himself and disappeared. You've got a lot of hares here, no? Yeah, lots of them. And do they eat your vegetables too? No, but the other day we saw three hair babies hiding underneath the kale. <laughs> Get on it, mate. So the cows were here two days ago and they've left quite a nice density of manure. So the eggmobile is moving just to this patch here. So these are the skid feeders and up to two weeks of food skidded around the field. It's beautiful.
So, 15 minutes to move 440 birds. Pretty ideal. And they've got some nice leftovers from the cows. Happy birds. Happy eggs. Beautiful morning. So it's a very nicely made unit. One thing we were talking about yesterday was how you could automate the opening because it's very nice to have automated nest boxes. You see these opened at five. This is the flap that opens out to allow them access. And these just make it a bit darker for the birds so it's a safe space because with any mobile eggmobile it's the consistency of the space in the nest boxes that gives them security. Uh, because hens like to lay in a safe known space. So that's the only constant thing in their changing environment. But uh, it would be quite easy to, you can buy um, electronic rams, about $150 each for the power needed to lift this uh, door. But then you could have automated opening for days that you're not moving. I think Mika's moving every couple of days behind the cows. You can also buy these pieces and these egg conveyor belts. They're not cheap for a conveyor belt this long. It's about 400 euros for the price I've seen. And nest mats are industry standard. So you can buy them. So you could fabricate this sort of unit yourself. I calculated it would cost about 600 euros for one, an eggmobile our size. So if we have four next year at our farm, that's you know, 2,400 euros in nest boxes, which is quite a big investment. Um, it's, for us it wouldn't be necessary, but I do like the fact that you can collect eggs without disturbing the birds. It's a very practical setup you know, using this basic roller. Very nicely designed. And nice to be able to store egg cartons up here. Mikkel, it came flat packed on pallets, right? One, One pallet. And how long did it take you to put together? I was pretty much doing it on my own. Yeah. I had a little bit of help from a friend. And it took me, uh, I think it was six days, one person. Six days, one person? Yeah, and now when I know how it's done, I can do it one person. Very okay, nice. It's a beautiful sunrise, we just moved the chickens. It's their harvest day today. So I'm gonna catch some footage and help out a bit in the meantime. Really excited to be here. It's amazing to see these guys working together. They've just done an amazing job. And I think, you know, inspiration to anyone starting out. They've put in about 60,000 euros to get everything established this season, but these are mostly long-term investments. They got their new cow breed going on, 400 eggs a day, and a lot of veg, and they're able to sell it all. And they could do more. It's just enough to manage right now and plan for expanding next year. Beautiful calves. It's really sweet for me to see these guys working together. I came here to do a short two-day training in the winter and there was nothing here at all. Like everything's literally been built this spring. But uh, I went to, with Mikkel on the way out of the country. I went to Copenhagen to meet Anders and Katrine for dinner. And I just knew in that instant they would do something together. Now Anders and Katrine are, are looking to start up their own project and I think rightly so. They've got such a driving capacity to do that for themselves. But I think it's been an invaluable experience for them all this year and you know a lot has been learned which is fantastic. So they haven't been using tarps much but a little bit to establish new beds. There's a lot of cooch grass here as well as buttercups and all the other standard pasture weeds. And they say they're not putting too much time into weeding. It's always a bit of weeding like the pathways here but then they use the wheel hoe just to rip that up. And it's it's looking beautiful. I mean, it's a really nice achievement for five months of work. This was literally lawn when I came here. So this is the tunnel that they put up. It's from first tunnels. I should start 
uh, asking for commission because I've helped sell a lot of these tunnels from the UK. I really like their service. Not sure I like their end wall construction to be honest, but it's, you know, it works. But uh, this is the size of tunnel we're getting at the end of the week at Ridgedale for overwintering 1500 chickens. Have a look in here. It's just full of tomatoes and tomatoes that are soon ready to go. They're harvesting 50 kilos a week at the moment, but they will soon have a ridiculous amount. Using tarps to prevent weed and keep the ground warm with some drip tape underneath. And they've got a really nice clip system. So they use a Dutch system, metal wires that come down half the length and these really nice clips uh, that back onto the wires. Oh, I bust this one now, like so. Very nice, they've kept a really tidy space in here, but just oodles of tomatoes waiting to be harvested. There's a lot of money in here. So we're gonna be using our tunnel to put up to 1500 layers in. Next year we'll be scaling up layers, but then in the summer it will look a bit like this. And we've learned to start our tomatoes a month earlier now because of the last two seasons, but We've got restaurant orders already for dozens of kilos a week. This is the way to do it. Good morning, Andres. Good morning. What are you doing? Harvesting? Cucumbers. Cucumbers. Very nice. Yeah. Every morning. This row is getting better. Yeah. They're good looking plants. Yeah. How are you doing all your record keeping in this? Uh, at the moment just try to keep track of what we harvest for each market and so we how many units we're making, how many kilos it is, if we're gonna sell out at the market and then at what time, and how many units we take back. So when we get back we can just easily calculate if we had this many kilos back and forth and how many we sold. Because we started out with a cashier where we registered every sold unit so it was one zucchini for that person two kill but it, it was too time demanding for Mikkel to tap everything in so we changed it a bit and now we try to keep track of what's selling on the paper it's gonna work and it's a lot quicker so it works really well you guys uh, it's harvest morning you've put quite little into tools now You've got very simple tools, yep. but how's that working? Are you happy with the tools you got? Absolutely, they're working perfect. We don't really need many more. You're talking about a paper pot transplanter? Yeah. You're up at the sort of bed length where that would be efficient now? Yeah. yeah. Any other tools that you think, ah, we must have one of them? It would be fun to try the tilt and see how it works in the mm. system. Yeah. Like just when we put out compost and see if we can get a really nice seed bed. Yeah, yeah I might sell you my tilfer because I yeah. don't think I'm ever going to use it. Yeah. So who's the tents made by? Ease Up. Ease Up and they got American. seven year warranty? Yeah. yeah. Very nice. What do they cost? Do they? It's, uh, what was it? 300 euros each? Yeah. And you have two of these with five tables. Yeah to make up your stand. Beautiful stand these guys make. Have you got any footage of you on the market I can put in here? Uh, no, we only have photos. So, breakfast time on harvest day. How much are you harvesting today? This is a Danish oh, toaster. Man. Funny old thing. How do you harvest? Do you harvest for to order or you just know what you're going to sell and you... market. Yeah. So you've got a good idea what you need and you just yeah, go out and get a weight-based... Yeah. Yeah. 
Feeling ready for the day? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's getting our load of butter and we will wrap it. <laughs> this is how uh, they do butter loads. It's butter that fuels the farm, no? Absolutely. Look at that, there's no cheese, so you make it up with butter. So it's harvest day, they harvest on uh, Thursdays for the Saturday market and then they harvest, Katrine stays home and harvests on Saturday for the Monday deliveries to restaurants. A lot of good veg, they're doing an amazing job to be able to sell it all and they're not gonna, I think they're gonna expand some new beds uh, later this season but then put in a whole new block like the one here for next year. Very impressed with the way they've managed to organize and that efficiency comes by not having so many people. They've had a few of our old team actually turn up and just help for a few days which they really appreciate but having just three people really coordinates things and allows for efficient operations. That's what I'm really looking forward to next year is just having less people on the ground. So what's on the list today? So we are harvesting and washing, packing all like roots, carrots, radish, beets. We are picking some of the chard, harvesting beans and then we got a small delivery this afternoon. I'm going to Copenhagen anyway so I ask one of our customers if they needed something for the weekend. So cool what's on. It's uh, nice five degrees in here, perfect for storm and veg. So you reckon it's been about 15,000 euros invested in polytunnel, irrigation, market stands, stores, promotion, chiller, irrigation, chiller, washing station. And you're aiming to grow 35 odd thousand euros and tools, things like the harvesters, yeah, etc. Yeah, yeah. And so you're aiming to double the money at least mm. just in the first season and yeah. extend it by half again next season. Mm. So it looks good. It looks really good, I think. What would your advice be to people thinking about starting up who need that kick up the bum to really get going? I think it has been really useful for us to start out with quite a diverse amount of vegetables mm -hmm. and then getting to know your market very well mm -hmm. and then find a few bigger customers and get a really close relation with them and, and start just, try and, just try and meet their needs from day one yeah. and just really yeah, go out your way to a super nice job with them yeah and you did consider a because CSA they will be model, your, they you? will be your friends for years yeah, yeah yeah for sure and you consider the CSA but you're it's working really well at the market isn't it? yeah I, I've I thought the CSA would be a good thing but in our context and in the Danish customers context I think the market and how we're doing the market is much more flexible and it suits the customer much more yeah so I'm now considering not doing this. Sticking with that. Yeah. We've been doing that with Rico and people really value that choice to be able to choose what they want to actually buy. Yeah. Don't they? Yeah. And it fits the sort of modern convenience. And these guys have been doing, we saw their little sign. As this organic standard is like the header board header, which is, they're the only organic people on the market. But everything's bunched to value, so one bunch for 20 crowns, three for 50, 10 for 150, so that's the biggest discount you can get. Very nice. And people are basically putting together their own CSA share every week when they come to the market. Yeah, so and people have the choice and flexibility, yeah. but you can still plan for the like it a lot. But you've got, in Denmark, you've got some serious um, Home delivery service now, big company that delivers nationwide yeah. and can deliver anything basically organic. They're serving 42,000 families on a weekly basis yeah. with like CSA type vegetable thing. But they're also doing meal boxes where you get all the ingredients for recipes that's in the box. So they're doing like different things and it's very, very flexible through their website. And it's a huge distribution huge, service. Huge. But you've got customers cancelling from them and coming to you because you're offering a flexible, fresh service. Yeah. We have had customers coming to the market asking if we would be there every Saturday. And of course we will be there every Saturday. And then they say, cool, then I'm going to cancel my subscription. And I'd rather come here and buy super local, super fresh produce every Saturday morning. Yeah. And you're dropping like a few thousand euros of products on your market. Saturday market. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And you're saying you had 10 grand of sales last month? Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. 
Something I always say to Nicholas, like to people, like once you get going, A, that's when your learning really starts, but also people start getting attracted to the place because something's mm. happening. But you've yeah. had the famous restaurant Noma here? Yeah. What were they doing? They, they are just on the most amazing travel I can think of. So they're basically going around for half a year on an um, inspirational uh, travel all around the north of yeah, Europe. So it's all of Scandinavia, Greenland, Iceland, Faroe Island, and just yeah, getting amazing experience and inspiration. Meeting farmers and meeting producers. farmers and producers and fishers and wildlife experts and you know they're just going around getting inspired for when they start Noma 2.0 in mm -hmm. December. Check these beauties out. So Katrine does quality control, yeah? Yeah. Andes is on washing. You all harvest and Andes does washing and then... Packing and putting in chillers. And Katrine is making sure everyone's turning the line. No, me and Katrine are harvesting. Who's the boss? Katrine. Yeah. So this is part of the institution. It's a really nice property on the edge of the lake here. And I want to just go show you the willow cleaning system that's over here. It's a toilet cleaning system, living biological one. They also have these really nice root cellars built into the ground here for storing a lot of produce. It's great for me to see these guys so proud and working well together. And I knew they would smash it this year, and it's really nice to see that their market's been a great success. They've done it really smart. And, yeah, I just feel like it's, you know, this idea of succession where Mikael really is a driving force along with his sister of this place having a new generation with new ideas, smart agriculture. And Mikael was saying when Noma came, they reflected back that of all the farms they've visited, in Scandinavia so far, they really talk about agriculture in a very different way here. They can tell that something different is going on. That's really testimony to the, you know, the entrepreneurial startups that are happening now. That, you know, there's a few of us representing here in Europe, you know, using some of the great models from around the world that are profitable and rapid to implement and making money in the first year. There's a nice big solar array here that powers this place. And behind is a willow system. There's five beds of willow that are coppiced alternately. So all the sewage from up to 50 adults is processed here on site. Very nice. It's been a sheer pleasure to see these guys in action and what an amazing job they've done in five months now. I've got really high hopes for the future of these guys, all of them, whatever they end up doing longer term. Some of my, you know, highest hopes in these guys but uh, it's been a real pleasure and I'm off to Luxembourg now I'll be there tonight and I'm off to see my dear friend Marco and Peter's another pastor of mine and they've set up this wonderful CSA their first sort of venture like that in Luxembourg so it's gonna be fantastic the next couple of days oh, yeah, yeah. We're watching the sea eagle that lives in the woods fishing. It looks like it's caught something and it's flapping to try and... Oh, there it goes. Beautiful. That's a big bird. Two meter wingspan, is it? Yeah, two twenties, I think. Amazing. Flying 
flying door. There's the That's other one. one. Wow. Beautiful. So, more carrots. More carrots. More carrots, more carrots, more carrots for the onions. Very nice. So, bunching in the field and then washing over the soup. Very simple, very nice. Works very good. Hello. <laughs> Beautiful. So, I'm on spring onions and we're bunching in the field with just a loose band, trimming the roots, and then they go off to a wash station. And it's really nice to see how efficiently they're running. And it's really, you know, for people who are wanting to start up, really look at these guys because they've just started with a big bang in their first year. And that availability of information now is just, you know, it means people can start up based on many people's lifetimes work to get rolling efficiently and profitably in the first year. You've got to make money in the first year or it's not worth doing, you know, and it's, it's super smart the way they're doing. Everything's like worked out for optimal efficiency. Veg is going straight from here to the packery, in the van, boom, out of here. And it's really great to see, I mean, Mika was an amazing farm manager, but really mostly interested in animals. He went to a farm in Chile after he left Ridsdale and grew veg most of the winter, which he wasn't expecting to do, but he fell in love with it. And then Anders uh, got really, was a really amazing intern and then Katrine he stayed on as a farm manager and Katrine came as an intern that year too and um, they he went off on a, a trip to Rodale and then to uh, Never Sink Farm and gained a lot of experience from working super hard. Katrine's been at Ag School here as well as Anders and working at a farm in Norway but just to see them like hit the ground with you know a relatively low amount of experience you could say and hit the ground running like this is very impressive. Yeah. Very nice boxes, very nice boxes. So 40 kilos of carrots off 7 meters of bed? Yeah. It's alright isn't it? Absolutely. 24. Ah oh, this. So it's down to two degrees now. Yeah. Very nice. It's, it's like swinging a bit, going from six to two. It quickly goes up, but it's just an opening the door now. It's gone up to 3.3. Yeah. But I'd say it's pretty sweet now for the electricity use. What, uh, what's your take on how it's been going on this at the market and the response of the people? Uh, it's been amazing. Like everybody who's coming is super happy about it and surprised that we do all of this ourselves. And yeah, the response has been absolutely great. You're quite unique in that you do everything yourself. You're not selling other people's veg now. No. You're just only doing your own stuff. And yeah, we had potatoes once at the start of the season, but it didn't really matter. It's like we have so much. Abundance of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, stuff. What have you learned about crops that don't work? Like Mika was talking about shaving off some crops next year. Like which things are you seeing that you just see aren't the main things you want to be doing? Uh, I think we have really good crops and I think we are almost at the right amount. But it's just tweaks to do. And you learn that, okay, a succession of radishes should be big and you should have too many. And try to push it and like it's just not small tweaks mm. i'm not mm, maybe uh i think i would do a very 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 similar setup we have a few crops like pepper peppers and uh, eggplant which we are aware that's mainly for fun and to have it ourselves but it's a good crop to have for yourself mm. as well you happy with your wash station? Absolutely. Yeah, it's good. It's very nice to be able to work from both sides now. Yeah, and it was surprisingly easy to set up and it's working better than we could have ever planned. So you just have spray downs here that drain out and yeah. then a chill tank for yeah. dowsing off the heat before yeah. it goes in the chiller? Yeah, and a drying table and packing table. Yeah. And the cooling room just there, so you just turn around. 
Well, and then when you load up the van, you're just wheeling it out straight yeah. out the back door here. No, it comes to here. Oh, you bring the van right in? Yeah. Off and you go. Small truck to get it out. We yeah. haven't yet made the ramp, but I'm not sure if we've done. So that you can utilize a little yeah. dolly like that? Yeah, take out the stacks. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. And we prepared the car the day before and just need the vegetables to go in. It's easy. Yeah. How long is it that you're, you're at market? Like five, six hours? Six hours. Yeah. And the drive is maybe half an hour, 40 minutes. Yeah. So it's not that it's a super long day as I was used to in America. Like it was the longest day of the week and you did 12 or 13 hours. And that's very common. You drive around, you have long markets. Uh, but here it's, it's easy. Yeah. We plan to get home from the market and get some harvest done for the next delivery on Monday. Yeah. So it's a, it's a double day. Yeah. It's really good. Super nice. Yeah. You're just saying that you've, you're getting 170 people coming to market. Yeah. What um what do you reckon the capacity is? Like you three are an awesome team, but what square meter of bed do you reckon you three could run if you weren't focused on any other things? If you oh. were just doing the veg garden, no chickens, no nothing. What sort of size do you reckon you can handle? Oh, that's really hard. Um, we did like we set up ten sections, and just the setup part takes a lot of energy. Sure, but the running bit once you got it going. <laughs> yeah. What do you reckon? You could double it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. With the paper pot, double it. Easy. Oh, you can triple it with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But question is, how much do you want inside and how much outside, and how do you want to plan your business? Yeah. So it depends. But I think ten section is a good start of you because you need to establish everything. Yeah. And then we had eighteen section at Neversink, and he was mm, closing some down. Was he opening? He was planning to take it a bit down and put more into houses and do more expensive crops in the houses. Mm. So it depends what you like to grow yeah, yeah. and how you want to grow it. But it's surely manageable. So you guys are really bringing some of this stuff to Denmark for the first time now. Yeah, when I was here in the winter, we were talking to the Eco Village big organic grower and we worked out that their production is 40 times less productive than what we're doing and ah. definitely what you guys are doing. Yeah. It takes them 40 times more space to produce the same value crop. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like, you know, this model is very familiar to perhaps some of the viewers, but it, it's new here, no? Yeah, absolutely. People are so surprised to see us having s such a wide range of products and vegetables and I remember people people making fun of our shopping baskets and the first market they were like oh you're really into it how you're buying baskets and I'm like yeah if you want to if you want people to buy a lot of produce you need baskets of course and now doing a market we all the baskets are out we have five people filling baskets what's the which baskets are you using? oh they're in, in the, the car we try okay. to not move it around yeah yeah but it's just a regular shopping basket so you really, you guys have benefited from just identifying the key tools and key efficient things that make it all run smooth and efficient. Yeah, and yeah. it's not big investment stuff, is it? No, we've it's been, just smart investments. Yeah, I think we've been trying to do the right investments and pay it off over longer periods. That's why I'm so excited to have tables with 10 years warranty. Like, it needs to last 10 years. 10s with the 7 year warranty and you get free spare parts if anything breaks. It's like, that's what we need pay it off over a longer period and get it right the first time and it's an easy setup it's an easy takedown and you're happy every time you put that tent on top of your van you're happy because you have the best tent in the world yeah it's good it's cheaper to spend money yeah and get the right gear yeah and it's really beneficial to something we tell our interns to go and see the best places that yeah. are doing whatever they want to do and yeah. see which tools and things are working yeah I've been to a farm which had more than 20 kinds of toads for produce and we were looking for lids all the time lids everywhere what size would fit and i went to never see they only had two kinds of toads all the same Different and the lids size, can't come off and the lids can come off never ever that kind of problem anymore it's it's amazingly good those little details add up to days off and yeah. evenings out and yeah absolutely yeah. and the frustration is out because you know you got the right equipment you don't need to bother about thinking, oh, if we had invested differently. You did the right investment and you're happy every day ever since. And you're really loving this salad knife? Yes. This is your favorite one? Yeah. 
it's the one we use that never sink. Because you lift up and you you lift it up and you cut on the end. Yeah. So you're not trying to get around it. It's just underneath. Yeah. Da, da, da. And what do you use this little packer for? Oh, it's for the tomatoes. It's for the pruning. I like it for pruning the tomatoes because if I need my fingers, my fingers are here. And when I need a scissor, it's there. So I don't need to move it around. Yeah. Cut now. And you, if you really movements. need to be careful, you can spin it and it's out of your way. You don't puncture any tomatoes. I love it. So a lot of beans to clear. Really like these apple picking baskets and these crates are definitely going to invest in some of these. It's really nice to have a lid in the crate. And they're just high quality, they'll last forever. So now we're building up our freezer room too. We're going to put a cool bot room in that's a lot bigger. I think there's some good investments to make. So I'm off to Luxembourg. It's been a real pleasure to see you guys working so beautifully together and efficient. And a lot of you watching this, if you find this inspiring what these guys have achieved in their first five months, then where can they go to find out more? You've got a website and a Facebook page? Absolutely. So our website is J-O-R-D-E-U-B-I-U-G. How do you say that? In your book. Your book. I'm going to link that below because it's hard to say in Danish. Yeah. I'll see and you've got a Facebook page and Instagram page. And I really recommend for those of you about to start up your things to really follow these guys. And you can show your appreciation, go and like them on Facebook, etc. But they'll be making a lot of decisions and refinements with all the knowledge they've gained this year. So it's a great stage to follow a project that it's where most of the learning takes place in the refinement. Absolutely. Thanks for watching our videos and I hope you enjoyed this one and looking forward to see the next episode from Luxembourg. Thank you so much for coming Richard. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Real pleasure. Yeah, yeah, so it's a pleasure.